Hey guys, it's Samuel Larsen here from Grogoros and today we are going to have an absolute treat for you. We're going to look at some of my favorite Google Chrome apps or plugins and how you can utilize them on your own Shopify merchant journey. Before I do that though, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure to do that now. We have a ton of on-site optimization videos for e-commerce stores so you can turn more of your visitors into traffic. But without further ado, let's jump into this one. And we are going to start with a couple of easy ones. And these uh, also will work for Microsoft uh, Edge if you're using that browser instead of Google Chrome since they are based on the same kind of structure. And most of these plugins will be available for Firefox as well. Some of them will be for Opera. So whatever browser you're using, you will be benefiting from the video. Anyway, so the first plugin is uh, Facebook Pixel Helper. And with this plugin, you can see what kind of data your Facebook pixel is collecting and whether it is connected the correct way at all. Facebook pixel is very useful because it enables you to retarget your visitors. So even if you are not really hardcore on Facebook, uh, when uh, it comes to the top of the funnel, you should definitely have your Facebook pixel installed for retargeting. And here you can have multiple different events tracked. So it will help you understand what kind of events are firing here. So. This is, for example, page view, and there's uh, some micro data that is also detecting. That's uh, more for your Facebook advertiser to understand, but it's good to understand the basics of that plugin. All right, moving on to the next one, we have the Google Tag Assistant. Now, note that Google Analytics is moving to Google Analytics 4, and the global script or the JavaScript on the page is moving and changing. So this is one where it will continue to be important as long as you are on Google Analytics 3. If you're using that setup, as uh, I say, still like 95% of the stores are doing it. So what will this do? I kind of hinted on this one uh, previously. So this uh, is pretty similar to Facebook ads. Plug in the Facebook Pixel Helper. It will help you understand the tags on your store. So is a Google Analytics tag uh, or Google Tag Manager correctly firing. So you should have a lot of this green. And here, if you have problems, you can then uh, always look into the where to optimize section. So it's uh, pretty nice and practical. So here, for example, you have the question mark and it will uh, go and explain this further. So I like these kind of plugins because they are easy to get to use. So there's no big uh, learning period for these ones. Also similar to Facebook Pixel Helper, this is also very popular, as you can see from the download. So most likely majority of you already knew these plugins. So there's nothing massively new here. So let's um, jump into the third one. And it's a one that you might also know as well. You might not know that there's a free version of it as well, which is actually pretty good. So next one is Grammarly. And very simply, it will check your grammar for mistakes. So if you are, for example, writing a blog post on Shopify, and you see that uh, there's uh, red lines here. You can just hover over that red line, click it, and it will show like, okay, time dash line should like timeline. So it um, helps you avoid those easy mistakes that can hurt your trustability as a merchant. So very nice little plugin, and uh, you don't need to use the paid version at all. The paid version has some more advanced suggestions but most likely it'll be okay with the free version. And that's actually pretty comprehensive already. So that's Grammarly, highly recommend it. There's no real reason not to have it. All right, next one. We are going to go a little deeper here. I think majority of you want to know this next one. I didn't even know it until a few months ago. So next one, Omnibug. Now, what does Omnibug do? So you can have your store in this kind of case, we are pretending to have the Kylie Jenner. And uh, we can do as uh, I'll just press F12. You can also go and do the inspect version. And here we have uh, our Omnibug plugin here. So I'll just scroll a little bit to the left here and it's here on the last one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hard refresh this page by pressing Control F5. So Control and F5 at the same time. And here we will see what kind of things are firing here. So this side, for example, is using Adobe Analytics, which is, uh, you'd say like a more advanced version of Google Analytics. And 
mostly like you'll be okay with Google Analytics. Don't worry about it. This is a huge Shopify store. You can see here what kind of things are tracking. And here, for example, we are getting a page view. Now we get it to here. Then uh, Facebook pixel fired to subscribe to button click. I, I think that's a misfiring, to be honest, because uh, I was just looking at the product. And then you see all the different uh, view pages, page views, microdata, everything that uh, this uh, setup is tracking. Now, how is this useful for you? Well, you can go to some of your competitor stores and take a look at how their pixel is working, compare it to yourself, and then see if you are tracking everything that you should be tracking. So you can do a little bit of benchmarking with these kind of tools, the three, four ones that we have now gone over. So the Facebook Pixel Helper, Google Tag Analytics Assistant, and Omnibug. In my personal opinion, Omnibug is the best out of these three because it can do everything. But there are preferences. This might have a little bit of a higher learning curve because there's no question marks here. You cannot click somewhere to get the info. You just get this uh, kind of uh, referring URL, DT, and uh, pixel version type of like more complicated, more technical things. So if you're a little bit more nerdy like me, like uh, you might like this one. If not, you might like the Facebook Pixel Helper and the Google Tag Assistant. All right, let's move on to the next one. So this next one is Page Analytics by Google. Pretty popular. This is a really old one already. So it's been around for at least a few years. I remember when I started back uh, in 2016 to really focus on CRO, this plugin was already there. So it goes uh, way back. It's not updated anymore, at least not very frequently. It's a couple of years old, or like two and a half years old, at the time of making this recording. However, it still works, still very good. So I'm going to show you how this works uh, in real life. You can get a little bit of an idea of this picture, but uh, let's do a little bit of a demo for you. So here's an example of uh, this plugin. And this uh, is a plugin that has this nice uh, page analytics uh, on off functionality. So you can just turn it on when you are browsing your store, for example. And then it will load all the relevant data for that particular page, or at least the most basic data. So page views, average time on page, bounce rates, exit rates. So you can kind of get a feel for that uh, page by page performance. Now that's all well and good, but the feature I really like about this one so you can actually get an idea of where people are navigating to. So here, for example, we can see that uh, this link is uh, the, the script, actually. So many people click on those kind of links. And then there's a couple of others. So only 3% actually click on the resources. And uh, some of these people click on the YouTube videos. It shows like this because uh, it has a drop down here. So it picks up uh, that part here. And then we have... Uh, some other clicks. Now, this particular page doesn't have uh, many links. So if you look at uh, your category pages, for example, you'll gain a lot more information. However, I cannot do it for you here because it would be a massive uh, breach of customer data, but you can definitely do this for your own stock and I uh, would highly recommend it for you. Okay, so that's uh, the page analytics by Google. So it is an official Google plugin. I'm not sure if they are going to have uh, one for Google Analytics 4. Really would wish that they would have. In a way, it would uh, make sense that they created this one and then they decided to pursue Google Analytics 4 a couple of years ago. So they just put this on hold and it's going to come back uh, better than ever, hopefully. Uh, there is one bit of an annoying part about this plugin, which uh, is probably why it has got some not so great reviews sometimes. So it is dated and it requires you to only be on one Google Analytics account at a time. So if you have uh, logged into multiple Google accounts, you will get uh, issues with that. So. Something to keep in mind. Uh, next one, let's do this one, page edit offered by Keller. Now, a very niche plugin in a way, but it has a pretty nice uh, use case here. So let me just show you how it could be done. And let's say you are looking to see how different elements would look on your site if you change them. So for example, we could change this. So I'm going to just click this on and uh, change the headline. So just uh, taking a look at how a different headline would look like. So in this kind of case, uh, I just typed in a new headline here. Our account zero methodology ensures that your visitors will no longer be wasted. Now, as you can see, maybe this doesn't fully fit into the three lines. So also with this plugin, we can go and make this uh, a little bit smaller or bigger. So 
seeing like, okay, how could that look like in this particular case? Perhaps like this would be. There's also some other nice features. So for example, I can look at how could this look without the button. So just uh, removing this like that. And uh, then you can do it for like here, for example, like, okay, that could uh, look like this, for example. So it's a nice uh, little thing to play around with. Very easy, you don't need to know any HTML, just the uh, go ahead, plug and play, and there's also different options. So that's that. I'll uh, let you do your own testing with it, but uh, really like that plugin as well. All right, next one, pretty simple one. So this is also from Google. You might know about this one, 1 million users plus. This is Google Analytics opt-out add-on by Google. So pretty simply, you can opt out of Google Analytics. So I don't want to be tracked. Might be very useful for your own store if you are constantly visiting it and you don't uh, necessarily have a stable IP. So if your IP address is not the same, then uh, this might be a useful thing. Um, I don't particularly use this uh, that much myself because um, it makes the tracking of real-time reports uh, a little bit challenging because uh, then I'm opted out from the analytics. So you can turn it off as well, but it's just like a, a little bit of an extra hassle. Um, so, not really much to explain about this particular plugin. Those were the big plugins, but I did mention you that uh, there is going to be a bonus plugin at the end, like nobody's using, even though they definitely should. And um, this is the next one. So, this is the DaVinci tool offered by Supermetrics. So, they have an office not further, far from here in Helsinki. Then, what this will do is um, it will like make your analytics look nicer. So I am going to install this extension here and uh, head over to analytics and let's see how it looks. All right, so this is the Google Analytics with DaVinci tools enabled. And uh, this is the one without it. So you can see a few different things here. So first of all, we don't have uh, these, uh, these things here. So the heat map reports. So you can visualize your data with this one to see which ones are high, which are ones are low. So for example, I can visualize the bounce rate like this and suddenly the data set uh, becomes a lot easier to understand. So here's an example of the use case. Here's uh, the geo report for locations. So which locations are performing uh, in which ways. And of course, like for this kind of reports, uh, we'd want to have a lot of data because it's most likely going to be a pretty similar one, but uh, let's not get stuck there. So with top uh, 50 countries, for example, we can see that the bounce rate by far is lowest in the United States. And then easily can also see that it seems to be highest in China. And uh, there you can make uh, your own conclusions. Perhaps uh, the Chinese side would have some text, for example, which ship to China, and then the bounce rate would be lower. Or there could be multiple reasons for this, but uh, definitely something to consider. And then of course, like if you see something like this, 14,000, in India, pretty high bounce rate. Maybe you should consider turning your site into Hindi, for example. So that's that. And you can uh, kind of click this on for pretty much everything. And this can be nice because then, uh, for example, let's say we're looking for uh, that revenue performance. So you can isolate that a little bit here. And uh, let's see like, uh, okay, users are so green, but uh, this revenue is also um, pretty green, but here, orange, red. So looks like for sure India is also underperforming compared to the general market. So these kind of things uh, can be very useful. That's it for this video. Make sure to subscribe for more awesome videos. So you can see there's a ton of ton of optimization videos from five years ago even. So anything you want to learn from CRO, you can do that from this channel. And uh, I'll make sure to provide the uh, awesome videos such as this one going forward as well. So you definitely don't want to miss out on those ones. Today's success in e-commerce is all about uh, being the best in the sea of competition. And uh, this is one of the resources that uh, will help you beat the market. All right, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers.